Welcome, crypto fam, to the number one daily Bitcoin pod. In today's show, I'll be breaking down the latest Bitcoin technical analysis as we do each and every day. According to high priest Bitcoin Max Kaiser, as predicted, Bitcoin's rise will accompany Western civilization's decline. We'll also be discussing wealth management firms to boost Bitcoin ETF holdings. I'll be sharing the latest from the Bitwise CIO, as well as Hong Kong investment firm Victory Securities reveals Bitcoin and Ether ETF fees, and these ETFs are officially set to go live live at the end of this month. We'll also be discussing Deutsche Bank expects Bitcoin price to stay high after the halving. While JP Morgan disagrees, I'm not surprised, mofos, just saying. Also, hedge fund veteran Mark Yusko says Bitcoin FOMO incoming as Bitcoin completes the halving. I'll be breaking down his timeline and we'll also be discussing the Bitcoin price upper limit set to four and a half million dollars per BTC for this fourth halving cycle, according to ecoin o metrics I'll be breaking this down for you. We'll also be taking a look at the overall crypto market. All this plus so much more in today's show. Welcome, crypto fam. What it do? JV here in the building. How many of you watched the Garcia Haney fight last night? That was so fire. Garcia knocked him down five times. Two of them were rule slips, but clearly got knocked down five times. And Garcia is the obviously one, but he is not the champ because he missed weight. But crazy fight night. Let me know if you were able to watch that. It was pretty interesting. Need good intel, says Lost Coins. Welcome, family. Good day, JV. Mods and the wrenches and the viewers. Crack the cold one and strap in. You already know I just opened up a fresh cocoa water for the stream. Let's freaking go. Shout out, Darth Melda. Good to see ya. Good afternoon, fellow Mooners. Good afternoon, Expos John. Good to see ya. Jennifer, Knoxville, Mark, Scotland in the building. Always a pleasure, Darth Melda. Good to see ya. Greg, James, Susie. Hi from LA. Good to see you as well. Bonus round. Welcome, James. Welcome. How to become a mod. You got to earn it. The OGs obviously eventually get it. So... Yeah, we're good on mods right now, but if we're seeking new mods, I'll let you know. Greatness, let's go. What up, JV? Shout out, Fatima. It's been a minute. How you been, sis? Hola, crypto people. Shout out, CFPV. Bill Graper, what it do? Good to see you guys. What's popping? Aren't those fights fixed? They're not fixed. However, the referee was clearly on the side of Haney, giving him all sorts of advantages the entire fight. Very clear. However, you can't fix a fight like that. Those are legitimate knockdowns, and he was getting messed up. Hello from Germany, says Gali. Gotcha. And also, I think one of the uh, referees, not just the referee, but one of the judges was fixed. However, it was just too... Anonymous, uh, too anonymous uh, in, this, in the concept that Garcia knocked them down so many times. There were so many 10-8 rounds. They couldn't fix it and give it to Haney. However, one judge had it a draw. And then the other two judges had Garcia up tremendously, which was the obvious, you know, right way to judge it. Ryan been nice. Yeah, yo. He fooled the world. Every single boxing analyst said Ryan had no chance. It was 10 to 1 odds for him to win. He was a big underdog going into that fight. Every single analyst on the broad broadcast predicted Haney. Not one single person said Ryan even had a chance. That's why I got to love upsets like that. Much respect to the king. Let's get it. <laughs> Shout out to Mateus. Uh, greatly appreciate you uh, gifting a membership of the channel. Shout out Phil C. You've just been hooked up. Uh, so thank you, family. We appreciate your support. Respect. Doing good. Love to see you. Shining at the top as always. Respect. Mick greetings from South Carolina. Shout out South, South Carolina. Pam Powers in the building. Uh, how do we be a mod? Sting the Quadaparina? Something like that. <laughs> yeah, man. It's been... Uh, been pretty fun. So we're post having. This is day two. We have on the 19th. Are you guys enjoying post having Bitcoin 2024? Let me know. Virgo cluster. Greetings to all. Shout out stress free VIP. Let's get it. Smash the likes. We greatly appreciate that. It does help out tremendously as always. Woo! 
Shout out Pharaoh Ferris Fox, Mississippi, in the building, M-I-S-S-I-S-S-I-P-P-I. Did I get that one right? <laughs> Welcome everyone just joining the stream. Uh, Bitcoin doing a bit of a correction today. We're down 400, but it is a Sunday. Markets open back up uh, tomorrow, clearly. ETF inflow shall continue. Happy 420 having day late. Just came back down-ish. That's what's up, facts. And speaking of 420, Garcia lit up a fat blunt right after the victory. It was pretty epic. Thanks for getting the Squirrel Master. Let's get it. Oh, for the gifts. Yes, shout out to Squirrel Bait. He the man. Uh, hi from Poland. Shout out Poland. Shout out Devon. Good to see you. Sub JV, just another great show. I'm ready, family. Shout out to the Golden Giant 58. New viewer, thanks for your efforts, bro. Uh, thank you, Loss. I expect you to hit that sub button if you haven't already. You get an on-screen shout out. We didn't drop like the past halvings. I'm a little surprised. Things do seem to be definitely different this cycle, Jennifer. Sup, JV? What up, Eric? Go. Let's get it. What's up, JV? Nice to be back. It feels so good to be back. Welcome back. How was your cruise, broski? Where did you visit? Let me know how it went. Haney Pack, says Freddie. Had champagne and doobies to celebrate. That's what's up. That's what's up. Back from the cruise, no Wi-Fi on it. Oh, boy, no Wi-Fi on your cruise unacceptable. <laughs> Wall Street's going to drain the miners. We'll soon see, yo. You saying for tomorrow? Miners are going to continue to do their thing, in my opinion. Correction before the markets open tomorrow. Hmm. I think this is the correction. I think they're shorter and shorter lived. Uh, shout out Patricia, London in the building. Okay, weekends are not for trading. Why? Liquidity, hunting algo bots run rampant. Don't buy in their cr crosshairs. Good point there, Greg. Good uh, good advice. But anyways, fam, if you're new to the channel, important to smash the subscribe button to receive daily premium crypto news alerts every day, just like this. Also, pump the likes. It helps pump the stream and helps out tremendously with the YouTube algo. Today is pod episode number 1616. I'm your host, JV. Today is April 21st, 2024. We had the happening. Two nights ago, and it was pretty lit family, it seems like, just yesterday, and the price has been reacting. However, it's been holding up. No massive dump or sell-off like we have witnessed the previous cycles. Let's kick it off with our market watch as we do each and every day. Bitcoin trading above 64,700. Ether trading above 3,100 as most of the alts are pulling back and in the red. And checking out coinmarketcap.com, we're sitting at a 2.37 trillion market cap with 62 billion worth of volume for the past 24 hours. Bitcoin dominance 53.7% with the Ether dominance at 15.9%. And checking out the top 100 crypto gainers. For the past 24 hours, we got Core, Bonk, and Arweave leading the pack. Below that, we got Stacks, KCS, and Neo. Now, which altcoins family are you guys most bullish on for this bull run? Holla at your boy. And checking out the crypto bubbles to get more of a visual perspective. You can see Bonk and Core leading the pack as the majority of the alts are correcting and in the red. But we also have Stacks up 5%. Let's go. And checking out on the monthly to get more of a broader perspective. Very similar. Uh, the majority of the alts, Rex City, some of them down 30, 40, 50 percent. But there's a handful in the green uh, doing its thing, including Core, Pendle, BGB, Ton, and MNT. And checking out the Crypto Green and Fair Index. We're currently rated a 72 greed. Yesterday at 66, last week at 72, and last month at 75 in greed. So there you have it, family. Uh, let me know where you feel the price action is likely to continue tomorrow as the markets open back up. Holla. I never pay for the Wi-Fi on the cruises. Need to enjoy the beauty of the world and the seas and the trip. Disconnect for a bit. Makes sense there. Completely understand. Dominic Republic. That's what's up. DR. Right next to here. Uh, you know, very close here to Puerto Rico and the neighbor of Haiti. Bitcoin is like money for the people who make sense. There you go, little germ. It's so boring sideways. <laughs> I understand. Get out of the ocean, then charge you an arm and a leg for the Wi-Fi, says loss. Always buy when it is boring. It sucks. No 100,000 by the having. 100,000 family hashtag pet rock. <laughs> Echo Prime, Neo, and Wild World. Thank you for sharing. I miss the times when no one was correct uh, connected. The world was so much better then. Hey, guys. Welcome, Don George. Bitcoin of 58 Gs, then fly. I don't know. We'll see if we get a pullback that low. It's definitely possible, but we'll see. Thus far, 60 has been holding pretty strong. You know what I mean? 
London calling. That's what's up, Bill. Shout out London. Hammer down in the northern Alberta, homie. Love the update. Shout out Aldornia. Sideways for a month, then we take off. What S coins will the composite operators land on? No one knows. If Grayscale hadn't been selling off, we would have already been 100K a month before the halving. BTFD says Corona. They have good ball players in DR and PR. And then laughing out loud, does that mean we don't have good ball players? And are you referring to like basketball or which, which type of ball? Uh, don't be parasites. 200 online and only 16 likes. Unacceptable. Do something for JV. More likes. Thank you, Mateus. We appreciate it. In my opinion, summertime, 70, 80 Gs. Summer, summer, summertime, summertime in the city. Look, pump it up if your game and went long. Yeah. When the dip hits, you just stay like King Kong. Hey. More than five shots in your stack, then get it on. Yeah. Let's go. Jay Ford, welcome. Love and Life family. Appreciate you joining the stream. Nice to be with you all as well. Exciting times amongst us. Now looking forward to Bitcoin having 2028. Send it. Are you moving back to Clearwater, Florida? Ask Donald Duck. That means no. I'm here in Puerto Rico to stay. Smoking some cherry pie and a banana backwood. You speak in my language. Hate the new YouTube setup. X chat and click the subscribe, then pop the chat. Easy peasy. Um, okay. <laughs> Not sure why you hate it. Mateus, uh, thank you for gifting five more memberships. Good Lord. Shout out James, Erico, Laz, Lost Cause, Leroy, and the Everlasting Bliss. You've all been hooked up with the micro strategy membership of the channel. Let's freaking go. You guys are awesome. I'm just happy to have been steady 64 65 i call that a win hashtag winning hashtag pet rock where you at let's go pump it up if you got more than five stats in your stack then get it on june is when the summer of the bitcoin begins i believe hey what's good no sour diesel had the people on my back to get a song broke, talk, we, we smoked, smoked them like, like a, a bong. bong uh hits from the hopi and bong Let's go. <laughs> I'm going to be sharing with you a four and a half million price prediction in today's show. So stick around. This is as per Equinometrics. Massive shout out to El Dorena. Appreciate the positive vibes. Greatly appreciate that. Uh, thank you for that massive support from the super. And congrats on sending your first super live on stream. Respect. Not sure about that, Greg, says Jennifer, with the momentum that we have had before the halving, we could be above 100 Gs. Laws cause 100, bump, bump, bump it up. Green caffeine, do what it do. You got to pump it up. Do you know? We know 100% I'm with you. Oh, yeah, we heard Kramer report that. Thank you. He said, he said, said, we bought more bags till we got a sword back. Boom. Got about six months left for the harvest. Enjoy that harvest then, family. And we appreciate all the support. Thank you, guys. You're, you're amazing. But anyways, let's dive into our next story of the day, shall we? Headline reads, BlackRock Bitcoin ETF hit 69 days of inflows on 420. Having day. Bitcoin is supplying some classic memes this week. And it goes beyond the 420 having date. Now, officially, we have... Eastern time. It was on the 19th, but in the evening, it was like, what, 8.30 p.m. We were doing a live stream. We captured it. If you missed that live, I encourage you to check it out here on the pod. But thanks to the success of the Spot Bitcoin ETFs, market observers are celebrating a halving, which has been almost too perfect. That's right. Bitcoin price action may be firmly sideways this halving, but it is timing, which is giving some a feeling that it was all meant to be. So, for example, Eric Balchunas, dedicated ETF analyst over at Bloomberg, revealed a curious having day coincidence. Not only did the seminal event hit on April 20th, a key meme date in of itself, but the largest U.S. spot Bitcoin ETFs sealed 69 days of straight inflows. It's a little too perfect, he says. The Bitcoin ETFs have seen a marked slowdown in inflows since hitting their peak in March. And despite this, BlackRock iShares Bitcoin Trust, the largest ETF by assets under management, has yet to see a single day of outflows. And last we checked, they're currently holding over 272,000 BTC on the balance sheet. The latest data covering the ETF flows includes from the UK-based investment firm Farside, showing momentum tentatively returning towards the end of last week. So on April 19th, iBit took in just under 30 million, while the second largest ETF operated by Fidelity managed nearly 55 mil. Now outflows from GBTC and ongoing 
ongoing topic of debate in themselves were modest on the day at 45.8 million dollars as outlined here by far side now recent form 13f filings have led concerns that bitcoin eats house have not managed to permanent the mainstream majority discussing first quarter allocation data we got jim bianco creator of macro research of bianco research described it as a disappointment quoting him here unrealized gains are shrinking fast he added about ETF investor gains versus the current Bitcoin price action. And countering this, we had Balchunas, who suggested that the asset managers would treat the products like hot sauce. Quoting them here, iBit now has about 60 holders reported, but they only account for a tiny 0.4% of the total shares out. Shows that most of the bites are nibbles, but there are a lot of fish. This in tune with the high daily uh percentage of trades, as well as our thesis, that this is going to be used like hot sauce for 60, 40 people. Just going to add a little bit. So there you go. Uh, And here's a quote from Max Kaiser, the high priest, as predicted, Bitcoin's rise will accompany Western civilization's decline. He also wrote, before Bitcoin, wars got started on a more unconscious level since Bitcoin. And I don't know why my neighbor's dogs are going crazy right now, annoying me. But anyways, perfect money that obviates war. All wars are started by Bitcoin disbelievers. Thankfully, who will take themselves out of the gene pool? mercifully. Tell them, Max. So there you have it, uh, crypto fam. There is the latest. Let me know if you agree with some of that sentiment or disagree. Holla at your boy. I'm going to fix the zoom in on here. I like it more like this. Let's see. Yeah. I don't know. It keeps resetting my webcam for some reason today, but nonetheless, welcome everyone joining the stream. I'm going to read some more of your guys' comments out loud. Out loud. A smash that like for the fam. Shout out Kevin Smith. The bears are back again. Damn you bears. Go back to hibernation already, will you? He is reading the news, maniac killer. Tell him, Jennifer. Yeah, if anyone has a problem with me reading the news, get the F off the stream, because that's what we do here. I read you the latest news, hence the name of the show, Crypto News Alerts. (laughs) Yeah, who don't risk that to doesn't drive the Lambo? There you go. Wow, where have you been? Uh, Yeah, my coins are going bonkers, says Bill. JV, just sent you a little ETH tip, just a small thank you. Thank you, Peter. Greatly appreciate the ETH tip. I do have an ETH address in the description along with my Bitcoin Lightning address and tips are always greatly appreciated. So thank you so much for that one. I mean, I also have a Lightning wallet, which people can send Lightning tips as well. You see it up on screen right now. I usually don't keep it up on the show, but you could also find that on or in the description, you could send lightning tips as well. So we, we appreciate that. Thank you very much, family. Thank you. Yeah, so tell them, JV, you, you got it. Wars have been around since the dawn of man, way before Bitcoin was ever created. They don't get it, JV. Shaking my head to surge, agree. Uh, full Bitcoin adoption will be for the end of all wars. One plus one, says Crypto Kobe. What's for dinner? Bitcoin bears. Is it that season? What up, guys? Corona free, what it do? Good afternoon, Neri. Good to see you, family. Let's get it. Can't short your doors, we can't afford that. Nope. Wait for the pump to come, we should have bought that. Yeah. So to zero, they really thought that. that. What's up with the fees on Bitcoin? Yeah, they ultimately just shot up right after the halving. I saw some outrageous fees. I saw a post going viral the other day where someone transferred like 70 cents and paid 500000 ish and Bitcoin fees. <laughs> Craziness. Lightning tips? What Bitcoin? Exactly. I understand. I thought you have headphones, but it is just chair. I'm not sure what you mean by that. I thought you have headphones, but it's just chair. Yeah, I don't know what that even means. I use a monitor uh, thing in my ear here so I can actually hear Again. whatever I'm playing with you guys and actually hear my own voice as well. But no, I don't rock the big headphones. I personally am not a fan when I'm doing a live. Best channel on YouTube, let's go. Cheers, Paul. Respect. Devon, rocket ships to the moon. Send it. Let's go. Shout out Darth Melda. Appreciate y'all support. You guys are amazing. Next story of the day, eh? We discuss 
Let's discuss a little deeper into the ETFs. This particular headline, Wealth Management Firms to Boost Bitcoin ETF Holdings. This is according to the Bitwise uh, CEO, Hunter Horsley, predicted that wealth management firms will increase their Bitcoin ETFs in terms of hodlings. The prediction comes at a time when the Bitcoin ETFs are expected to gain even more traction after the halving. Horsley's prediction aligns with the broader market belief that there is increasing demand for the ETFs, given that Bitcoin investments in the U.S. ETFs market recorded a net positive inflow right before the Bitcoin having day following five consecutive days of drain. That's right. BlackRock's iShares Bitcoin Trust iBit is closing the gap with Grayscale standing just shy of two billy. This positions BlackRock to potentially surpass Grayscale as the world's largest Bitcoin fund, which should be any time soon. Grayscale's Bitcoin Trust experienced a 68-day period of value decline, shedding nearly $16 billion and reducing its assets to $19.4 billion dollars. And in contrast, iBit saw continuous asset growth reaching approximately $17.3 billion worth the total assets. However, notable capital outflows have been observed from Grayscale Spot Bitcoin ETF. Over the last five days alone, investors withdrew almost $90 million, contributing to a net outflow of $1.6 billion since January. And despite its early lead, Grayscale supremacy in the Bitcoin ETF market seems to be diminishing. Fidelity and BlackRock quickly gained substantial market shares from the onset of trading. For instance, Fidelity and BlackRock's Bitcoin ETFs experienced net inflows of $37 million and roughly $19 million in the same week, providing relief to some of the market's liquidity issues. Meanwhile, Bitwise CEO, or CEO describes the adoption of the Bitcoin ETFs by registered investment advisors and multifamily offices as stealthy but significant. He notes that major financial entities are discreetly conducting through assessments of the Bitcoin market. And according to Farside data, I already actually pointed this out in the previous, uh, we show you the outflows and inflows and the outflows of GBTC have been unprecedented. They've gone from over 620,000 Bitcoin pre-Bitcoin ETF to now they're down to like the 300,000 range. And that's why BlackRock is about to do the big flipping on them, which you already know. So very exciting times. In our next story, we will be discussing the Hong Kong ETFs, which are set to go live at the end of this month. And I'm going to be sharing the fees, which have just been released. So you can see how competitive they are with the rest of the market. Shout out McLovin. What up, legends? Good to see you, broski. Kirkland brand, hell yeah. You're a man of the people. <laughs> Paul. <laughs> yeah, I think that's the brand of Costco. Correct me if I'm wrong, but Kirkland, like everything in Costco has Kirkland. Here's what happens with the ETFs. They are tied to the IRAs and the 401ks. Every two weeks, deposits arrive for the ETFs that are forced to buy, no matter what the price is. Tell them there, Greg. Uh, mini GBTC with a 0.15 fee. I did hear some rumors of having another fund off of that. Why don't they just reduce their main fund from 1.5% to 10x cheaper to 0.15 is my question, right? Uh, Bitimus Prime, fees will drop back down after the super early ruins token get bought up. Uh, right now, it is blitzing the network with traffic, says Bitimus. Mark, Institutional investors need at least 90 days of due diligence time. Expect the wall of money to start arriving. There you go. Well, it's been 90 days already. Been roughly 100 days now. 101 to be exact. Golden Cross on the weekly. 100 100,200 exponential moving average. Let's go. Whack-a-mole in here with the play a troll. You got to do what you got to do. Shout out to the mods. Always holding it down. We don't. We must create our own strategy. Is it enough to observe the black rock hand to do to some? Hmm. Golden cross on the weekly. Bring it. We welcome the golden crosses. Let's go. You can call me three AC because I'm blowing it up. Short squeeze more, please. Yeah, it's going to pump. They drop food, but it's still not slowing it up. Yeah, boy. Pump it up. Don't you know? Pump it up. You've got to pump it up. Shout out Terrell. Don't you know? Pump it up. I know all about that. You read my mind. Don't you know, pump it up. You've got to pump it up. Don't you know, pump it up. Hey, pay attention on how I break this Bitcoin slang down. <laughs> Little bubble. Let me ride that rocket. Whoa. Buy that freaking dip. Buy that freaking dip. <laughs> I buy Bitcoin every two weeks also, regardless of the price. Love it. To physically destroy something, ruin. <laughs> JV, you need to wipe 
sound of the haters love from the Bronx JV need a wipe sound. What what do you mean by wipe sound? <laughs> uh, Melda, let's get it. LFG, let's freaking go. I can't wait till the feds start showing this love. The full flag on the chart got me blowing a nut. Uh. Now, we all know Bitcoin is the best asset. How about that fight last night? I opened up the show talking about it. I watched. It was around 1230. The fight went off. Garcia, epic, major round one. Then he started dropping him throughout the fight. He obviously won the decision. One corrupt <laughs> judge had it a draw, which is mind-boggling. There's no way that was a draw. Too many 10-8 rounds from Garcia knocking down uh, Devin Haney. And he has never been knocked down his entire career professionally. So it was very, very impressive, to say the least. The only unfortunate factor is uh, Ryan was three pounds overweight for the weigh-in, so he don't get the title. So now the title is actually vacated. However, Garcia is now the people's champ and the new face of boxing, representing the kids. He even pledged to donate $20 million to Gaza for all the kids. And then Andrew Tate said he'll match it. So that's $40 million going to some of the kids. So respect. You know what I mean? The ref was definitely paid. <laughs> They counted, um, a, a lot of the knockdowns were counted as like slips. And then basically Devin would get like knocked and about to fall down and then just hold on to Ryan. And they didn't take any points away from Devin Haney. Meanwhile, they were take they took a point away from Ryan, which was interesting. Jeff Booth is a legend. There you go. But even with the paid off ref and the paid off judge, Garcia still won. So respect to the kid. King Garcia, let's go. Greg, 100, uh, great plan. It's called DCA, dollar cost average. The best way to invest in any asset. Amen to that. That is nice. That's what's up. Middle East and Wales quietly buying. So where's the Kaiser candle? I was promised. Uh, according to Max, uh, Abu Dhabi and Middle East will be making the announcement soon. He believes Mr. 100 is Abu Dhabi. So we'll see. Land Wolf based. <laughs> she, how dip can Bitcoin go? <laughs> I think this is the dip. You got $150 discount. Seize the moment. Before you know it, we'll be right back at 74 G's, in my opinion. Boxing to there, the old scams. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, big fight with Mike Tyson coming up soon, too. I'll be looking forward to that one. Hopefully he knocks out Jake Paul. I think the world is wanting that to happen. What do you guys say? Let me know. Any boxing fans, holla. Do you Come on. Cash it's moving fast. Anyways, fam, next story of the day, A. Eh? Let's discuss the latest with these Hong Kong ETFs. Headline reads, Hong Kong investment firm Victory Securities reveals Bitcoin and Ether. ETF fees. Here we go. Hong Kong-based investment firm Victory has reportedly disclosed its proposed fees to investors for their Bitcoin and Ethereum ETFs following the recent approval of the crypto ETF products within the region. The announcement comes even though the Hong Kong Securities and Futures Commission, known as the SFC, has yet to publish a list of approved ETF issuers. If approved by the SFC, Victory Securities customers will face proposed fees for Ethereum and Bitcoin ETF shares in the primary market set at a half a percent and 1% of the total transaction with a minimum fee of 850 bucks, according to an extract of the translated report shared by Wu Blockchain on 420. That's right. For investors interested in buying and selling existing ETF shares on the secondary market, the fees will be 0.15% for online transactions and a quarter percent for telephone transactions. Quite interesting. Now, the fees are comparable to the rates set out by the U.S. asset managers offering spot Bitcoin ETFs. While different fees in the U.S. are waived until various times this year, asset manager Franklin Templeton set their fee to 0.19% while other ETFs range between 0.2% and 0.9%. Now, we all know GBTC imposes a notably higher fee of 1.5%, which is the highest by far. Now, it was reported Hong Kong has become the latest country to approve the spot Bitcoin 
uh, and Ether ETFs, and this is actually the first spot Ether ETF in history. Now, at least three offshore Chinese asset managers, including Hong Kong units of Harvest Fund Management, Basara Asset Management, and China Asset Management, plan to launch their spot Bitcoin ETF and Ether ETF soon, with the appro approval which saw praise from many in the Hong Kong or in the crypto community in general. Others were more skeptical of the ETF success within the region, uh, quoting Belchunas, mainland China investors probably won't be eligible to buy Hong Kong listed spot Bitcoin and Ether ETFs as they are barred from buying virtual assets. So there you go. According to Belchunas, the inflows are not gonna be as high as they are here in the States for those reasons, as many investors are limited, obviously not including mainland China. But let me know your thoughts, as it seems the uh, the fees are very competitive with what we already see here in the States. But one of the major differences I'm aware of that it'll be, you could actually put crypto in, whereas with the state within the states here, you got to use the cash equivalent, right? Everything is cash in and cash out. Where here, we may be able to use Bitcoin and Ether to actually invest into the ETF itself. But it leads me to believe if you're a self custodied hodler, what's the incentive to use, I mean, an ETF? an institution or whatever to hold your Bitcoin so you can pay a fee. Wouldn't you rather self custody it, not pay any fees and have unconfiscatable crypto? That's just me thinking out loud. But anyways, I digress. Let me know your thoughts, family. I think on the broader scale is definitely good though. I think the more competition, the better big money coming out of Hong Kong. So hopefully it has a good positive impact overall on the crypto market but let me know your thoughts. Look at the tiny market cap coins that are really responding to the Bitcoin price changes, says Bill. If we can't break 64.2 by tomorrow, we should see 54 again, says Crypto Covey. I bought at the top when it popped to 31 last year. What a sucker. Do not time the Bitcoin, just buy it, says Unmatrix. What they don't tell you is always the fine print. If there may be a margin fee when you buy, tax-free account, says RB. That's nice in Puerto Rico and own your own Bitcoin. There you go. If mainland China can't buy Hong Kong ETF, who can and will? Well, apparently the investors in Hong Kong, and maybe there's loopholes, right? There's typically loopholes for everything. If mainland China investors really want to invest, there's probably some way somehow. Where there is a will, there is a way as they once said. I think that the only reason to use the ETFs is to roll over your 401k. There you go. If, you're, if your funds are stuck in a 401k and you want exposure to Bitcoin indirectly, then I do think the ETF is a solution for that. I see a trace at 63.4. Big love, CNA fam. Shout out to the tough T. I want the only real money that's ever existed, self-custody and in cold storage. Tell them. You agree? And there, there is no second best asset. And that is why we are here, right? Because we need an asset. Bitcoin is the best. There is no second best. Tell him, Michael. Is there a second best family? Which one's the best crypto asset? Well, Bitcoin's the best crypto asset. Okay. What's the second best? There is no second best. I'm not saying I'm number one. Uh, I'm sorry, I lied. I'm number one, two, three, four, and five. That's how we do. That's right, fam. Pump the likes to pump the stream. Let's freaking go. The next dip, I'll take out my 401k completely, but no ETF can't do it, says Surge. What's good, fam? Shout out Dankness. Good to see you, broski. How you been? Always a pleasure. Let me know how your day is going. Let me know if you watched the Garcia fight last night. That was pretty lit. Man, I know everyone's got to be talking about that right now. It's on my mind. I can't stop thinking about it. Yo, yo, what it do? Your thoughts on the FET? I don't know anything about FET. You tell me. What does the FET even stand for? Holla, let me know. Anyways, fam, let's discuss 75000 incoming. New all-time high price discovery. Send it. Let's go. That's right. JP Morgan Chase, everyone's least favorite bank and Deutsche Bank, have weighed in on the potential impact of the Bitcoin halvings price an ecosystem. The Bitcoin network, as we know, completed the fourth halving on April 19th in the evening, which we captured here live and in the flesh. Despite the agreement on the halving's impact being priced in, the two banks diverge on the Bitcoin post-halving 
price trajectory. So here's the breakdown. Deutsche Bank analysts um, basically explained that a note on Thursday that the Bitcoin halving is already partially priced in by the market, noting that the event has been widely anticipated in advance due to the nature of the Bitcoin algorithm, while stating that they do not expect the prices to increase significantly following the halving event, quoting the Deutsche Bank analysts here. Looking ahead, we continue to expect prices to stay high due to expectations of future spot Ether ETF approvals, future central bank rate cuts, and regulatory changes. And a recent survey by Deutsche Bank revealed that more than half of the respondents anticipate cryptos to evolve into an important asset class and a payment method. And furthermore, 10% of those surveyed expect the Bitcoin price to surpass 75000 by the end of the year. Why so bearish? Well, I guess we're talking about people from a bank. Uh, banks, I mean, are going to be banks at the end of the day. Now, JP Morgan analysts also doubled down on his belief that the Bitcoin halving has largely been priced in. Now, I disagree and nothing new under the sun. I typically always disagree with the big banks, uh, so I don't believe it's priced in whatsoever. He said Thursday expects a near-term decline in the price of Bitcoin following the halving, attributing it to overbought conditions and prices remaining higher than the crypto's comparison to gold when adjusted for volatility. He also highlighted the subdued level of venture capital funding for crypto projects, quoting the JP Morgan analyst. We do not expect Bitcoin price increases post-halving as it has already been priced in. In fact, we see downside for the Bitcoin price post-halving for several reasons. Now, last week, JP Morgan cautioned about potential downward risks of the crypto market, highlighting the Bitcoin remains overbought despite the recent price fluctuations. The analysts also cast doubt on the crypto's ability to achieve parity with gold and in investor portfolios. The Global Investment Bank anticipates a potential drop of the Bitcoin price to 42000 following the halving. Now, everyone can dream at the end of the day. Personally, I don't see it, but hey, teach their own. That's JP Morgan Chase for you. Can you foresee a $40,000 correction or do you think they're out of their mind crazy? Let me know. Exactly facts, 3.8 thousand is your bottom. So be it. <laughs> 61 is my current bottom. Nice, Greg. I say 60 whole strong. We'll soon find out though, right? Come on and get that money, Joseph. And speaking of JP Morgan Chase, this jammy jam uh, is from Jamie Demon himself. Bitcoin, etc. You pointed out the only true use case for it is criminals, drug traffickers, anti-money laundering, tax avoidance. Tell him, Jamie. That's how he gets down when he gets down. The client is laughable. The Bitcoin lack of supply will show the price eventually. The price can only go up with the incoming demand. Send it. Yeah, like I said, these hucksters and fraudsters take anything they say with a grain of salt. Just saying. Criminals. Drug traffickers, anti money tax avoidance. Jamie Demon in the building. The largest corporate fine at the time. <laughs> Under 60,000 next Friday. We shall soon see, dude. Mel Stroy, welcome. Possible 44, 5 bottom. It's all good, says Steve. Well, if we do bottom out, see is the moment. Take advantage of it because. We'll probably never see that again, for sure. Signs and wonders, it's hard to believe. Some still ain't getting it. $1,000 correction a come in, says Marcus. Welcome, Marcus. If it drops to 42, I'm selling my other kidney. But then you won't have no more kidneys, Thomas. And said, you can just sell some unvaxxed sperm and get 6,000 a load. Rumor has it, just saying. $13 billion, that's billion. For selling that secure attack. It's crazy how they still don't believe in Bitcoin. Well, you know they understand it, but they FUD it. That's a part of the game. Mainstream FUD, nothing new under the sun. Yeah, you know I mean, missed the fight, JV, but we'll watch the highlights later, boss. Yeah, you'll enjoy it. Epic victory by King Ryan Garcia. The underdog, 10 to 1, shook the world. New face of boxing, let's go. Jamie Dimon should love Bitcoin. He likes to help criminals after all. Precisely there, McLovin. My congressman just called me back. I uh, reamed him for waving a Ukraine. Wow, did he really wave the Ukraine flag? I saw that. Is that not treason when you see everybody in Congress waving the Ukraine flag? Candace Owens, according to her, she says all of these congressmen were obviously blackmailed and they're all just waving the flag. Yay, 60 billion to the Ukraine. What about the United States? What about us? 
craziness. Um, good for you, Jennifer. Two years ago, my banker said Bitcoin was worthless. Clowns. Exactly. Never listened to a banker. I'll put 140000 in if we hit 53 Gs. Do it up, dude. 100 extra money where your predictions are. Let's go. I have pure sperm. What does that say? Pure sperm. Where do I sign up? <laughs> Ask Jennifer. She may have some insights. I love Jamie. He is funny. I don't like Jamie, and I don't think he's funny. I think he is a criminal. Only experts and looking for JB News. There you go, Mateus. I appreciate that. Ruining people's lives. And yes, 10x, send it. 100x, 100x. We're going to be discussing that target as well. Rap is like scissors, always lose against the rock. <laughs> Smash that like. I appreciate it. No second best. Subscribe for 100,000 total. Our goal for JV. Cheers, fam. Bring facts. Had a laugh at me three years ago when said I'd do buy his shrooms for NSX and my Bitcoin someday. He laughed just still consider buying it a few weeks ago. Hilarious. Buck the bankers and buck the Fed while we're at it, Devon. There's no way we hit four and a half million this cycle. Never say never. I believe in Doge, says Rihanna. Welcome, Rihanna. The price of Bitcoin is 64 Gs. The value of Bitcoin, 40 million per bitty, if you understand. Uh, infertility clinics are looking for unjabbed sperm. So there you have it. So now Jennifer is in charge of the bathwater and the unvaxxed sperm. Poor woman. <laughs> hey, she volunteered. 100X is like Bad Bunny. <laughs> Mateus gifted another membership. Shout out to Dutch Hope. Appreciate you subbing to number one daily Bitcoin pod. Let's get it. Congratulations, Crypto Voodoo. You have been hooked up with a free membership of the channel. On behalf of Mateus, told him I'm considering a Rari. Yeah, now we're talking. Your new song for these live events, I want to be rich. <laughs> Foxy Lena is about 30%. Buck the Fed. Buck them, buck them all. I agree. We hit 450 Gs this cycle. 450 Gs. Yes, please. No more Mickey D's. <laughs> we are adults here, and it is funny. It is quite funny. Anyways, guys, we discussed the 75,000 target. Now let's discuss some Bitcoin FOMO like a mofo before we dive into the 4.5 million price prediction. Headline here reads, hedge fund vet Mark Yusko says Bitcoin FOMO incoming as Bitcoin completes the halving. Let's break it down. The Morgan Creek Capital founder Yusko thinks we have not yet seen the FOMO phase grip Bitcoin market participants. Speaking of the Bitcoin investor day, the hedge fund vet says the Bitcoin's latest halving kicked up Bitcoin's fair value from 50 G's to about 80,000. Let me know if you agree with that. And according to Yusko, he sees sideline traders and investors rushing in to load up on Bitcoin once the Bitcoin rally is towards its fair value. Quick shout out to Kevin Smith. He just sent the super for 20 bucks. I appreciate the support family and the Bitcoin orange especially. He says, thank you, JV and family. They nada. Greatly appreciate much respect. Uh, so quoting again, Yusko, fair value has doubled in each of the previous halving cycles. Now I don't think it will double this time because now we have inscription fees related to ordinals. And so instead of going from 50,000 where fair value is pre-halving to 100,000, I actually think we go probably to 80,000-ish, but we are still below 80,000. So once you start going towards that new fair value post-halving, then the FOMO kicks in. Once the FOMO kicks in and you get the increased adoption from the demand shift from the Bank of America and Merrill Lynch and the thundering herd finally getting approval, I think all of that is going to push us to a very different price level. Yusko highlights that FOMO has not even started based on the low search activity for Bitcoin on Google. He also says the people close to him have not yet asked him about Bitcoin. Quoting him again, this conference is an echo chamber. We talk to each other on crypto Twitter about how smart we are, but the average person, my family members, are not calling me yet, but they will. Let me know if you agree or disagree. With Mark Yusko, and do you think there will be a supply shock incoming? I've been discussing this here on the channel. I definitely think we see a supply shock this year on the behalf of the demand shock we witnessed earlier this year with the Bitcoin ETF inflows continuing massive volume. Now that the ETFs hold over 840,000 uh, Bitcoin in just over 90 days, which is quite impressive. There's down to 1.8 million-ish Bitcoin available on the exchanges. And you already know, once that supply runs dry, 
Numbers go up, Bitcoin reaches new parabolas, and game on. Send it. Men don't grow up, we just grow older. Exactly, dankness. Tell them. Hoddle gang, hoddle gang, hoddle gang, hoddle gang. I am 13 for the 40th straight year. That's what's up, Bill. I'm I'm 14. I'm a little old. I'm, I'm your elder. A dollar now is worth 20 cents. I love that. It has went down two cents in the last month. Tell them. And it's just going to continue to dwindle the U.S. dollar. Facts. When will the supply shock hit? Exactly. It could be in six months. It could be in three months. It could be in 12 months. Nobody knows, but it will hit. Mark my words. What up, JV and fam? Just tuned in, says Ku's dog. Oh, Japan. And it's a beautiful whale free sea. Little germ, what it do? Yeah, man. The Ali Rizza, the Rizzeracta in your secta. Welcome. When my family starts asking about Bitcoin, that's when I get worried. We hit the top. Exactly. Howard Lee, welcome. Good to see you, family. Thanks for tuning into the stream. Back to Jamie Demon. Anti money laundering, tax avoidance, criminals, drug traffickers. Bitcoin is a bubbling pressure cooker. Women got old, men age like fine wine and never grow up. <laughs> Steve, that might be a little biased. Truth, Bitcoin six to nine weeks post having has an average provided approximately 48x gains within 515, 518 days. 48x gains. We're talking multi million dollar biddies at that because 20x from 50,000 is a million. Let that sink in. Anticipating a new round, the price discovery. Me too, Joseph. Will we get that new round here in April? Will it be May? What are your thoughts? June, I will probably be 42. We reverse, we inverse those numbers as men, dankness. You're going to be 24. How do you like those apples? 24-year-old dankness. Let's go. This year was the 34th anniversary of my 21st birthday. <laughs> I love it, Jennifer. Dig it. Respect. I'm not selling. Now, after the Bitcoin Miami conference last week and El Salvador making Bitcoin legal tender, I got so inspired. I had anti money Shout out to the tapeworm, Jamie Dimon. Okay, bro, you are the freaking CEO. Come on, look in the mirror. You were a Gilligan's Island banker. Okay, bro, you were the CEO. Come on. Tapeworm for the win. <laughs> Bonance. You were a Gilligan's Island banker. Drug traffickers. Love that jam. Blue pilling equals orange pilling. Someone with no money. I officially retired at 55. I love that, Greg. Cheers to retirement. <laughs> copper pennies don't lose value. Hmm. I guess the value is in the copper, eh? The, why is the dollar losing all of its value? Are you saying that the pennies are superior to the dollar because the dollar is just paper, confetti, and the penny is actually a metal? Makes sense to me. Copper. Okay. I can be 24 again for my eighth year. Yes, thank this. No problem. You have my permission. Why not? I mean, I just turned 14 yeah, a few months ago, so is what it is. Just remember, it's not the age, it's the mileage or the motion in the ocean. <laughs> it's not the boat, it's the motion in the ocean. There's a goal heist at Toronto Airport, for real. Oh, wow. So was the airport, like, hodling gold? I didn't know they kept gold at the airports. Hmm. Orange pill, two neighbors yesterday, the same neighbors that didn't want to listen when Bitcoin was 17000 Sounds about right, Steve. Everyone pays for Bitcoin at the price they deserve. Love retirement started two years ago at 56. That's what's up, Coos Dog unwillingly retired four years ago. I had an accident that almost took me out. Screaming, Max, you got it. Wall Street is fraud. America is fraud. The world is fraud. Banks are fraud. Central banks are fraud. We live in an era of fraud. It's all based on fraud, and they get a percentage of the fraud. That's the business model. Wow, that's so deep right there. It's all run on fraud, and they get a percentage of, of the fraud, and that's the business model. Preach. Shout out, Kaiser. JV just turned 14, and I am 10. <laughs> You hit the double digits, the same age as my daughter, Devon. Then he's like, oh my God, how does JV have a 10-year-old daughter when he's only 14? <laughs> Penny 
these are mainly zinc now. Copper got too expensive. JB, did you hear there is a volcano spitting out gold? I didn't hear about that, for real. Free gold, everybody. <laughs> Take that, Peter Schiff. Retired at 53 eight years ago. Right on, Expo Sean. Hell yeah, they are fraud. Tell them. To suggest that there is any moral or ethical aspect to anything that's going on now is to be completely naive about the fact that we live in an era dominated by financial terrorists. Terrorists, jihadis of banking. Terrorists, terrorists, jihadis of banking. Facts, tell them. It's all about the boat and the Bitcoin riding tide. <laughs> no boat, no float. <laughs> Oh, my God. Even if I was retired and didn't have to work, I'd still do what I love to the moon, Lambo. Love it, animated decisions. It's all about having a purpose. You know what I mean? Retirement would be boring if there's no purpose. A lot of retired people pass shortly after retirement because there's no more purpose in their life. So as long as you're busy and you got some form of purpose, like tuning into the show every day, helping to orange pill the world, spreading Bitcoin adoption, You'll live a long, fruitful life, right? I'm in the same boat. I do this because it's my passion. I love to do it, and it gives me a purpose. And as long as you have a purpose, life is good, right? It creates fulfillment. Biddy's goal shooting at the El Salvador volcano. Let's go. Which country is the uh, volcano spitting out gold? Fax Max Antarctic volcano is currently spewing gold at a rate of 6,000 a day? Word. Forced to retire, flying at 65, still run 5K every day. That's what's uh, on Belcher and Olmerton. Shout out Pinellas County family, my stomping grounds. I still make music. That's my purpose in life. Love it. Retired at 29th Bangkok. I'm 52 now. You're definitely living your best life. My purpose is Lambos and hoes. <laughs> First bought Bitcoin and then retired. Any gold standard to be broken before the ink dries on the dock? Yes, yes, yes. Retire to grow weed. You will always have something that needs you. I dig it, facts. I was busy traveling. Amongst many other precious, semi-precious metals are found along the volcano veins. Good to know, Greg. It makes sense. Cool, I'm on the Icelandic government. Owns that volcano. Wow. So the secret to a happy life is to reduce your expectations. I dig it. Less is more. Everyone should stand at Chase Bank, withdraw money, and turn it into the Bitcoin. Big gift for the CEO. Let's go. I'll never retire, says Abel. Work your excuse to be of service and love people. It'll. I'll never retire. You dent something, disconnect, and you die. Exactly, Susie. Exactly. The government only tells you to believe in God when they've got all your money in the accounts. Preach. But anyways, family. Now for our feature story of the day. Here's a $4.5 million Bitcoin price prediction for this cycle. Let's freaking go. Shout out Equinometrics. They made this tweet the other day. Price range for Bitcoin in the fourth halving cycle. Upper bound, $4.5 million per BTC. Lower bound, $140,000 per BTC. That is if... Bitcoin ends up following a growth trajectory in the range of the previous cycles. And let's actually check out this diagram they shared along the chart. What if Bitcoin's growth after the fourth halving follows the same pattern as the previous cycles? Well, assuming the same growth rate as the past three cycles, we would expect one Bitcoin to be worth anywhere between 140,000 and 4.5 million per Bitcoin starting from $63,000. That's quite a range, but it is not like Bitcoin has ever been shy of surprises. Tell them. And it all starts here. We are starting here one day of this having cycle. You can see at 63,000 at the start of the chart, it shows you the trajectory after the first having, and it shows you the trajectory after the second having and the third having. Where do you think the fourth having trajectory is likely to uh, take us? Let me know, family, in that live uh, chat. They also wrote, some people think Bitcoin is due for more diminishing returns over the next four years. I think that is not a hard rule. Mega cap tech stocks are not suffering from diminishing returns. And Bitcoin is currently playing in the same category in terms of 
market size. And my apologies if I didn't show the freaking screen here. I've been meaning to share with you. <laughs> I just realized that, so my apologies. So let me actually bring it back. Equinometrics, again, recap. They're saying upper bound target, 4.5 million. Lower bound target, 140,000. They show you the trajectory on this chart right here, comparing the first halving, second, third, and where we may go on the fourth, and back to where I left off right here. I think that is not a hard rule. Mega cap tech stocks are not suffering from diminishing returns, and Bitcoin is currently playing the same category in terms of market size. For sure, I don't think 4.5 million per coin in the next few years is likely at all, but can it go to mid six figures? Absa freaking lootly. And so let me know if you agree or disagree. And now I actually want to read you this article headline Bitcoin price upper limit set at four and a half million for the fourth having cycle. Let's go. That's right. As the fourth Bitcoin having concluded, experts offer bold predictions for the Bitcoin future. Equinometrics, the leading crypto insights provider, set the upper bound for the Bitcoin price for the fourth having set at an astounding four and a half million per BTC. And in addition, a Bitcoin maxi offered a staggering 1 million target for the Bitcoin price action. So let's break this baby down. In a statement, Equinometrics emphasized some people think Bitcoin is due for more diminishing returns over the next four years. I think that is not a hard rule. They cited the example of the large cap tech stocks to explain the situation and added mega cap tech stocks are not suffering from diminishing returns. And Bitcoin is currently playing in the same category in terms of market size. However, they express skepticism of the Bitcoin Bitcoin price surging as high as four and a half million within the next few years. Moreover, the analysts mentioned that the upper limit has been set considering the Bitcoin will mirror the upward trajectory noticed after the past halving event. Nonetheless, they're optimistic about the Bitcoin price reaching mid six figures. Now, mid six figures, the first number that comes to my mind is 500,000 per coin. Let's freaking go. I'll take it. Now, Alessandro, the co-owner of the store Bitcoin Pod, echoed this sentiment ahead of the last having event. He stated, here's my prediction for the next epoch a Bitcoin between 2024 and 2028. We will reach a price of above $1 million per coin. Let me know if you agree or disagree. He also anticipated a shift in market dynamics. He asserted no more bear market maximum, 30% retracement. If it will be more, it is because the price went up very fast and therefore not really a retracement. And furthermore, he envisions a significant inflow of institutional capital into the spot Bitcoin ETS with a total capital deployment exceeding $300 billion. In a addition, he predicted that several S&P 500 companies will publicly disclose their ownership of Bitcoin or Bitcoin ETFs on their balance sheet and also highlighted Bitcoin's potential to become an environmentally sustainable asset, noting the following. Bitcoin will become an ESG asset, also in the mainstream narrative, contributing to increased renewable energy usage. So there you freaking go. Let me know if you agree or disagree with Ecoin O metrics and their four and a half million Bitcoin price prediction for this epoch cycle upper bound top with their lower bound target of 140,000 and their most likely scenario in the mid six figure range, which would mean roughly $500,000 per biddy. Let me know your thoughts. I personally, I can see it happening. My bear scenario for this particular epoch between 2024 and 2028 is $222,000. And my bull scenario, which is my bullish case is 750,000. And what's right in the middle? 500,000 per coin. So let's freaking go. Can you see a $500,000 biddy? Holla, let me know your thoughts. I feel most likely it's going to happen by next year in 2025. I think if the cycles are to repeat or rhyme with the previous happenings, then it's the year proceeding to happen. We tend to hit the cycle peak. However, we also have to consider things are much different in the landscape of the crypto sphere. This particular epoch, for example, for the first time in Bitcoin history, we broke the previous all time high before the halving, right? We smashed 73.8 roughly a month ago and we just had the halving like virtually a day and a half ago. So you gotta keep that in mind. So things are a little different in the landscape. Also, we have the institutional adoption, which did not exist a previous cycle. So with all this institutional FOMO, BlackRock now holding 272,000 Bitcoin, about to flip GBTC, already overtook that of MicroStrategy. MicroStrategy does 
control uh, 1% of the Bitcoin circulating supply, and they're just getting started. So now you have major asset managers racing for the biddies, all in competition with one another. Now we have ETFs about to be launched out of Hong Kong. You have ETFs about to be launched out of El Salvador. We have more nation state adoption besides El Salvador. We have Mr. 100 continuing to purchase at least 100 Bitcoin per day. According to Max Kaiser, his top candidate, he believes, who is Mr. 100, is the nation of I shouldn't say nation, but Abu Dhabi, which is UAE, major city over there in the Middle East, uh, that Dubai money, you know what I mean? Uh, so what are your thoughts? Uh, we also have sovereign wealth fund adoption, such as Qatar. We also have, you know what I mean? We gotta, we can't underestimate the, the retail. The previous cycle was driven 100% retail and took us to $69,000 per coin. So once you start to factoring institutional FOMO, retail, nation state, adoption, right? Sovereign wealth fund adoption and all this other stuff about to hit the fan. Things are about to get pretty lit. So I want to know your thoughts. Can you see that? Up to 700,000 bottom control at 540,000 says Claude A. Schultz. I love it. Gary says, I like 500,000. Make it happen. Send it, Captain. Let's freaking go. Bitcoin is super bullish right now. That's right. Hella bullish. 65,000 times 48 is 3.1 million by the next having. Let's go, Greg. I love it. Thanks for sharing. Someday I'll be a millionaire until tax time. Well, if you hodl, you always be a millionaire. You know what I mean? No capital gains for those who hodl. Let that sink in. Panama was a lot of fun. I visited San Juan Island. Nice. Panama is a lot of fun. Shout out, Panama. We're closer to 200,000 Bitcoin due to the ETF paper hands. The Dave Portnoy's, eh? Expos, John. 4.5 milli. I need to buy the lib. What is that? A defibrillator? What's the defibrillator do? I'm not familiar with that thing. <laughs> but yeah, $1 million family. Can you see it happening? Four and a half million, 500,000. When do you feel that's most likely to happen? Can you see it occurring this cycle? Or do you think that's a little crazy? Do you think it'll be the next cycle? Holla at your boy and let me know. I'm gonna read as many of these comments out loud as I can. Keep them coming. All can invest in what they can lose times the same low probable uh, until 2028, every millionaire gets FOMO and only 0, 1, 2, 8 left available for them. So every full coiner is a multi-millionaire. So shout out to the whole coiners. Maybe it's possible for the RIAs that do a lot of educating clients on Bitcoin. Most of the no coiners have no understanding of how the Bitcoin actually works and seem uninterested for whatever reason. Dollar cost average in, dollar cost average out. What about XRP animated? Let's go. HODL is what I am doing. I love it, Devon. I love it. A defib resets your heart rhythm. Good to know. <laughs> I also have a hot, but I can't talk about what they do in here. Amongst other things, says Marty. Four major banks on the verge of insolvency. Bank runs. Let's go. You going to sell any biddies this cycle, SRB? Is anyone selling or are you going to continue accumulating? Let me know, guys. Bitcoin is going to 10 milli. Yes. Yes, only four major banks are facing insolvency, not counting all the regional banks. Wow. Yeah, that's a real thing. Remember last year, uh, the regional banking crisis is what took Bitcoin out of the gutter from 17,000 to back above 30 Gs, right? That was driven purely off of the, uh, you know what I mean, the regional banking crisis. Remember January of last year, uh, first quarter, was pretty lit. And then what took us to the next level was the ETFs when they officially went live. Even just the thought of them being approved when BlackRock came out and started talking about a flight to, what do you say, a flight to uh, quality or flight to safety. And uh, Bitcoin been pumping ever since. Never sell, borrow against, there you go. Only 156 likes, unacceptable. We're about to recapture 65 Gs. We back in the green, baby. Let's go. <laughs> buying Bitcoin, Velo, and SHX, putting in cash, going all in. Cheers to all. Shout out Justin Edwards, XRP 500. That's pretty crazy prediction right there. So you're going you're gonna to say uh, XRP is going from 52 cents today to $500? Whoa. God bless you guys. Smash, this, <laughs> smash that like, fam. My yacht also goes on land and pops wheelies because it's expensive and bought it like that. That's what's up, Marty. Yes, they use Bitcoin to get them out. Whoa. Let's go. <laughs> XRP to... F yeah, exactly. Mercy. 
Hi, Kent from the UK. Hoddle, hoddle, hoddle. Teddy Rex, Will Smith, that like button. Mike Tyson, that like button. Ryan Garcia, that like button with that left hook. You know what I mean? Left hook it. Let's go. Please smash those likes. We appreciate it. Much appreciated. Dumb question, but do I need to... What does that say? See the thumbs up button? Do you need to hit it? You need to Ryan Garcia that 100%. 10 million by 2030. Send it, Susie Carr. I love it. I think that was Fidelity's prediction. They said 10 mil by 2030 and 1 billion due to hyperinflation by 2038. Hmm. Wells Fargo, Bank of America, UBS, and the TD Bank, they're on the verge of insolvency. They will go belly up in a matter of months. Let them go belly up. Sell your XRP to avoid the tears, Stephen says. The law of flotation was discovered by the floating of things, not sinking. No Saul, but ICP at the dip, says Edwards. Let's go, Senate, Devon. I can see it, buddy. Right on. You can see what you see. I know the Simpsons like made a prediction like that one time, right? Then they say like a 400 and something dollar XRP. Then everyone was running with it. The Simpsons are never wrong. Still looking. I'm seeing a new tube interface here. Salt and pepper that like button. No, spin the Rella that like button. She was my favorite from Salt and Pepper. <laughs> Played at a poker room last night wearing my Bitcoin hat. The guy asked me about XRP. I laughed and said, good luck. <laughs> Tony. <laughs> How'd the poker playing go? Did you win? Close the chat window. You'll find the like button. Charlie the Carpenter. Thank you, Carpenter. Nope, they're wrong. 1.1 billion easy by 2030. Send it. I'm the real Satoshi Nakamoto. We'll be buying Bitcoin throughout this week. It's a bullish week. Let's go, Satoshi. I see some shorters selling. Yeah. See news reporters telling. Uh -oh. Us all to sell it. We start longing that shit. So we can hop in the ship and we can pump, pump, pump it up. Day Nada Expos, glad you're learning something. I appreciate your support. Thanks for tuning in. What up, JV? Been busy. What's your thoughts on the fool that set himself on fire? I don't think that was today. I think that was a couple of days ago. I think that was at the Trump um, hearing. Um, sad to hear that he felt that necessary to make a, a, a point or a statement because I think all the points and statements he made is common knowledge. And did you need to, you know, set yourself on fire? I don't recommend it to anybody. You know what I mean? Any suggestions? Got a few Bitcoin trying to figure out how to withdraw the low fees. It's like, I've known about the corruption of the government and all the evil they have been doing for the past 20 plus years. I've gone down that rabbit hole. I live down the rabbit hole, but I would never set myself on fire. Like, oh my God, the world is, the world is crazy. This is unacceptable. Let's go on fire. To me, that's uh, very stupid. Yeah, I mean, you can do more good, um, ex maybe exposing the corruption without setting yourself on fire, for Christ's sake. You know what I mean? Live to, to see another day. <laughs> what does that say? 37,000 in a few days? I think that's crazy. I do not see that happening. Um, LFK, 65 Gs, send it. Click on the video. You should see it. Thank you. Thank you, guys. I respectfully disagree about the XRP-ish talk, but I'd cash out on the XRP mooning sooner. I would have Bitcoin mooning as never sell and flip the XRP. Well, something you got to consider, XRP has been consolidating for five years. That's not being a, an XRP hater. It's just the reality. It's been consolidating for over five years. It is the only top cryptocurrency that has not been going anywhere. Everything else is like rocket to the moon. XRP is just like, no, we're just going to chill at the 50 cent level for the next five years. It's like, good Lord. And uh, obviously, uh, Gensler didn't help it with the SEC, not just Gensler, but the guy who, uh, Jay Clayton, who launched the actual lawsuit against um, Ripple Labs his last day on the job before Gensler took over. And now uh, the SEC is trying to get $2 billion for a settlement. And of course, they're not gonna give them $2 billion, so they're fighting it. So as long as this stays in the courts, maybe goes to the Supreme Courts, it's not going to be good for the price action of XRP family, just FYI. You're on YouTube, JV, be careful. Uh, thank you, Jennifer, for the reminder. I agree, JV, says Devon. Uh, it be a great time to buy more. Yeah, yeah, tomorrow, say six. What do you think of XRP? I think you should fold your hand. Never owned XRP. Have no personal debt. Life is good. There you go. XRP is like a child I don't talk about. 
Are you saying the redheaded stepchild? <laughs> XRP hasn't moved since Moby Dick was a minnow. <laughs> oh my God. I think Nipsey's given us a signal here. It's hard to see him because he's kind of cut off a little. Let me see if I can move out of his way. There he is. Nippinator. Gary Gensler was mentored, MIT, Glenn Ellison, Caroline. Oh, yeah. Isn't Caroline's uh, trial coming up? The execs of FTX. And I heard that Bankman Freed can get off the hook from the civil lawsuit just by throwing all the celebrity promoters under the bus. It just goes to show you what type of guy that guy is. Like anyone who promoted his company is now throwing under the bus so he can get off the hook. Hmm. That includes Shaquille O'Neal. Um, Tom Brady, like Stephen Curry, Larry David, all the big names. Even Katy Perry was listed. JB, I watched the debate with Tone Vays and Roger Veer for six years ago. Very interesting. Right on. Can you share your email? Um, I think you can find my email on the YouTube channel. Let me think. I think it's CryptoNewsAlerts11 at gmail.com if you want to send me an email. But just note, I get thousands of emails of, with sponsorship offers, and I probably haven't checked my email in at least three to four weeks, and I'm probably 700 emails behind, and I get to the point where it's overwhelming. So uh, if you really want to reach out to me with something important, maybe send me a DM on X, or I'm trying to think of alternative ways, because my email is like, I mean, it's impossible to keep up with. Nippinator is living the good life. XRP will go up, but not like the XRP army thinks. Exactly. I think you guys should be counting your blessings if XRP returned to its all-time high of like $354. $4. I think four or $500 is a little crazy. I mean, four or $500 is a little crazy. But hey, everyone can dream, right? XRP equals communist bankers token. Uh, pretty much mercy. Pretty much. He is Canadian, so it's easy. Right on. Nippinator living a good life. Bitcoin for tomorrow. I'll be here. We stream seven days a week, family, each and every day. The number one daily Bitcoin pod. I take great pride in that. Bitcoin having will take Bitcoin above 150 Gs. Uh, hold for the future. Facts. My goal in life is to be as relaxed as Nip. <laughs> Do you get them chemtrails in Puerto Rico? Um, definitely more common in Florida. I mean, when I go to Florida, they're everywhere. Um, have I seen them in Puerto Rico? Yes. Do I see them all over? Like, no. Like, I don't see them in the sky right now. I'm looking at the sky. I don't see any. However, don't, don't get it twisted. They exist <laughs> virtually everywhere, unfortunately. Did you set up a PO box? Oh, my God. No, I haven't set it up. Thanks for the reminder. I need to set it up. Need to set that up. Anyone who sets themselves on fire for a cause has deluded themselves with their own self-importance. Nobody gives a shit if you want to do that to yourself. That's the sad truth, Jester. I don't think anyone lost any sleep over it. And again, I watched some of the videos before you know, that he was preaching and everything he was saying was like common knowledge to any conspiracy theorists. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's like, we've, we've known about this forever. I mean... You just found out about it and just couldn't take it. So you figure you set yourself on fire. I don't know about that. I'm making my dog some squashed, spoiled cod. Oh, word. What kind of dogs do you have, Devon? XRP Army sounds ominous. I like peaceful revolution better. The leader of the XRP Army is Ben Armstrong. What do you, what do you got to say to that? He, he, he's been claiming it for a long time. He reiterated it today. He's like, I st I'm still a member. Of, yeah, I'm still the leader of the XRP Army. Do you guys accept your leader, uh, Ben Armstrong, formerly known as BitBoy? Let me know. <laughs> Almost no chemtrails in Maine. Not enough people up here to make it worthwhile. You got to love that, Steve. Uh, Bitcoin price increases are the inverse of people's confidence of their fiat currencies. Preach. Go ahead and boo me. I have seen what makes you cheer when the army moon Lambo, we are going to rub it in. Um, boo you. I, and personally, I don't boo anybody. So I don't know who you're talking to animated decisions. And I don't even know what you're referring to as far as what you hold, but to each their own. And uh, I personally just share how I truly feel. I want to see everyone succeed, even the shit coiners. 
Um, I just like people succeeding. I like to celebrate other people's success. So I don't get a kick out of people getting wrecked or anything like that. I'm not that type of person. I want to see everyone win. But I also understand that ish coining, most people will get wrecked and lose. So hence why go Bitcoin. Bitcoin's guaranteed win, fastest horse in the race, hodl for at least a cycle or two, and watch your purchasing power skyrocket versus the dollar. Simple as that. No gambling whatsoever. Self immolation is the self flagged nation of the Middle Ages. Too much chemtrails and rain in the Netherlands, some sun, sunny. We don't need a leader when it comes to many. Look at what has gotten us so far. Exactly. I think in the Bible, we refer to them as uh, false idols. Enough of them. We got enough false idols. Elon is your false idol. You know, T-R-U-M-P is your false idol. Tucker Carlson is your false idol. Right? I'm just saying. Ben got his BitBoy name back, but I don't follow that dude no matter what name he uses. <laughs> like you say, you love XRP, but it keeps on disappointing you. I don't love XRP, um, if you're referring to me. The only crypto I love, just to be clear, is Bitcoin. I have love for Bitcoin. I don't really love anything else. Even the second largest crypto by market cap, I may own some, and I still don't love it. Um, maybe I respect it. <laughs> but the only coin I love is XRP, and the only dog I love is Nipsey. Don't bash Top G. Uh, no, who's bashing Top G? I'm a fan of the Top G. Um, Andrew Tate, that is. One of my Sam Bankman friends, ex-employees, told me that our governor is Satoshi. Have you heard of that? Disturbing. Our government is Satoshi. Oh, yes, we've heard those rumors. Uh, the NSA allegedly created Bitcoin, but that doesn't mean they control it. If it is true and they did create it and Satoshi is five individuals from a three-letter organization from within the government, it, it, that could be true. But it doesn't. that doesn't change the fact that Bitcoin separates money from state. It doesn't change the fact that Bitcoin decapitates the head of the central bankers. And it doesn't change the fact that it's perfect money. And it doesn't change the fact that it's going to go to a million, 10 million, and eventually $100 million per coin and increase your purchasing power. Regardless of who invented it. Jeb McKelleb was the lead dev and co-founder of Mt. Gox. He is also the lead dev and co-founder of Ripple Labs. Coincidence? Yeah, I don't believe in coincidences. White paper BTC. Andrew Tate beats women. That's some propaganda and BS that is false. That's a slander. And that's an allegation that is not true. If it was true, he'd be in prison. He got Matrix attacked for teaching masculinity to young boys at the end of the day and uh basically deciphering the matrix they banned andrew tate from the school system in the uk i wonder why because he single-handedly defeated the matrix and people look up to him especially the young generation of boys young boys they want to control so yeah i mean i think that's ludicrous the state and i think that's slander uh to repeat an allegation as fact when it, there's no truth to it. JB, how many tokens of the respectable cryptos do you hold? No, I don't hold anything. I don't hold nothing. Coins are digital, so therefore you can't physically hold them. <laughs> Check Tate's court files. Shout out to the Tate's. We need more Tates on this planet that are willing to challenge the status quo, go against the matrix. We need more Nippinators too. Look at that. That deposition of the nip. You know what I mean? <laughs> Good to know, JB. Thanks for the info. You're welcome, Susie. So, yeah. Note of on, I merely muse. <laughs> what up, c -list? What up, JJ? Wink, wink. Don't do crap coins with more than 5% of your assets. You might 100x, but likely it'll get wrecked. Yeah, I can give you a, a I mean, my, I've had two altcoins that appreciated as well as my Bitcoin when I first got started. Uh, and one of them was Ethereum. 
uh, I had, I think initially like 5% of my portfolio was Ethereum or less, maybe 2%. And then Ethereum ripped from whatever, $80, $90 a coin to go in tapping 4,000. So it was like 50X gains. And eventually I converted the majority of my Ether stash back to Bitcoin after receiving 50X gains. So I can say with Ether, I did 50X, converted it to Bitcoin, win. And I had one other altcoin, ENJ. Um, I don't know the exact gains off the hand. It was a gaming token, previous cycle, when Tika Tawari did like the five coins, the five million, you know, series. Like, oh, this looks like an interesting project. This is a long time ago. And I uh, purchased some and it became very significant. But yeah, it was funny because ETH was like 2% of my portfolio because I was, I've always been like leaning towards Bitcoin maxi, even when I first got started in crypto. But I diversified a little bit into some of the alts. And then my ETH portfolio ended up becoming like 20% of my overall crypto portfolio as far as US dollar value. But that's because it went up 50X. But then I put it back into Bitcoin. So I'm still, I don't know, potentially 99% Bitcoin, potentially even higher. Um, and yeah, so ENJ performed for me very well, but I also converted a lot of those gains to Bitcoin and I maybe did a 50X on that token. Um, now Bitcoin in of itself, I got started at $1,500. Um, I don't know what the X amount that is, but it probably did 40 plus X as well. So in hindsight, Bitcoin has been virtually my best performer minus those two altcoins, which are right in the same category. However, I've also had altcoins that did very bad, um, you know, like, uh, Bitcoin gold. Um, I diversified into some of these other ish coins, a long time ago, and they did very bad in comparison to the few coins that did very well. So for me, Bitcoin, Ethereum, and ENJ gave me my top gainers, roughly 50x gains, maybe in each of those. And I'm happy with that. I mean, um, I think Bitcoin can do another 100x from here in my lifetime, like realistically, which would very easily send Bitcoin to that what is that? Uh, six and a half million range, even higher potentially. So we'll see. Big ups, Ryan Garcia, top shelf trolling, next level. JB has between one and 400 Bitcoin, says Jennifer. I like to make it a little more broader. I have between 0 0.0001 Bitcoin and 5,000. Somewhere in between there. Um, honestly, I don't even know. JB, <laughs> JB, are you a fan of Bitcoin events like the one in Dubai? Uh, personally, I don't go to a lot of events. I've only been to a handful of them. Um, my background, like just FYI, uh, before I got into crypto, I used to speak at events and I'm used to companies wine and dining me and paying first class airfare and paying my hotel and you know wanting me to be a speaker um, with past things I have built. So it is a little weird for me to just go to an event and pay for my own flight and hotel and go to an event, you know what I mean? And not be a speaker. It's, it's something new to me because I've been speaking at events my whole life and, uh, doing that kind of thing and people flying all around the world to see me. You know what I mean? Um, but in crypto, it's like, I started all over again. And so, yeah, uh, I, I have yet to be invited uh, to an event where they pay for all my stuff. And I think I'd more likely go to an event and speak um, if I was invited versus just me going there. Because at the end of the day, I'm like, I can just watch the event on my TV and not have to leave the house. It's more convenient. Yeah, I mean, and plus I can stream. One of the downsides of going to the events is the show. Uh, you know what I mean, I have to still do a show. And if the internet is questionable and annoys me. Like when I went to Miami, the hotel, like internet kind of sucked and I, it was, it was a struggle to even do the show and it annoyed me, but nonetheless, I digress. JV, as much as Bitcoin as his ex gives him as a biweekly allowance, JV has as much Bitcoin as his ex gives him biweekly allowance. My ex gives me as a biweekly allowance. Interesting. Uh, JV has missed 100. I wish. ETH gas fees are outrageous. I remember needing $120 ETH to swap $80 for other coins. I like alts only to gamble with. That's it. Yeah, I mean, theoretically, that's exactly what it is. I, I think it's a smarter investment to invest and gamble on 
an altcoin than it is to play the lottery. I mean, as a real life example, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> JV is a small whale. I propose to see this. Uh, his house costs about a million and he has about double the Bitcoin and collateral. He bought his house a few years ago. You guys know way too much information is all I'm going to say. <laughs> Yeah, but I don't have anything at the end of the day except this cocoa water that keeps me hydrated. So I'm very grateful for the cocoa water. And we're going to continue with the uncensored version of the pod exclusively on Rumble because it's going on 530 here. And I think the Nipponator. Oh, wh where'd he go? Oh, he's lying in the, I see him in the mirror there. Okay, he's like just chilling outside the bed because it's probably so hot in this room. But anyways, let's continue with the uncensored version of the pod uh, exclusively on Rumble. If you don't know, now you know we stream on YouTube and Rumble at the same time every day. When the YouTube stream ends, we continue with the uncensored version of the podcast. So head on over to Rumble and let's get ready to Rumble. Let's go. All right. Uh, YouTube should be finito.